Scene 24, take one. Bye, guys. On that day at Calvary, they nailed him to the cross. The sky turned black, the earth rolled back. He looked like hope was lost. They said, if you are the king of Jews, come down so we can see. Jesus cried, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? God turned his back. And looked away And I believe a tear Rolled down his face And he must have cried The greatest tear ever cried For love I'm Kyle Sherman I live in Fort Worth, Texas with my beautiful wife and two kids. I'm 31 years old and um, I'm excited about making some music for God. I grew up in church and uh, my mom was the children's choir director at our church. And I, I remember growing up in children's choir. And so just grew up making music um, in, in church. And I played when I was completely terrible for a lot of graceful people who clapped and said, man, you keep doing your thing. And I gradually got better over time. And um, when I reached, reached a point in, in life where I committed to be the youth pastor for a church, it was a startup church and it came time to launch and they didn't have a worship pastor. And I said, well, you know what? And I'll, I'll fill in till we find somebody. And uh, it, I think it was evident to everybody as soon as I took that role, that was more of a fit for me. I already was passionate about music and, and it just seemed like God opened that door. I started playing guitar um, when I was 15 or 16. My dad encouraged me to for a long time. I don't know what happened, Some, something clicked in me and I just loved it. And so I was, was pretty terrible at the beginning, I guess like everybody is. And uh, since I started leading worship at our church and playing out places, that fever will get in you too. And you just get excited about communicating to people. And I think that's what music is for me, it's just a, it's a joyous thing, it's an expression that I love, but I think as far as playing in front of people, what I love is just what it communicates. And it seems like it transcends language and culture and everything. And we're looking at my kids and my wife now. <laughs> For me, this is the best thing in life. And um, I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Stacy and I are, are high school sweethearts and we grew up going to the same school and we just never really crossed paths very much growing up. And so I am, I am the, the leader of the Bible club, um, AKA dork. And uh, Stacy is cheerleader, president of student council, AKA popular. And um, I was just shocked when she actually liked me. And that was when we were both 17 and we've been together since we were 17. And, and we've been through a lot together. We've quite literally grown up together. My wife and my kids are just truly everything to me. And I consider them my greatest blessing from God. And um, I, I, I mean, I know for sure I would not be who I am today if it wasn't for my wife and for, <laughs> and for these two uh, little ones. We were on the last trip rushing through the airport trying to get here and our kids are with us and uh, we're sweating and uh, I'm changing baby diapers. And I think at one point Stace looks at me and goes, life of a rock star, right? And we die laughing because it's, you know, it's just, it's just life. It's beautiful. It's filled with um, dirty faces and Kleenexes, and it's fantastic. And I wouldn't change a thing, man, it's awesome. God could have sent his legions down to set our savior free before he shed his last drop of blood for you and me. I was at Life Church for probably three years, and, and over the course of that time, I met Bob and Janice Simpson, and it just struck up a relationship with them, and it was, it was pretty clear pretty quickly that we both shared a common goal. Bob Simpson, he and his wife Janice, they're the majority owners of the Texas Rangers. And so I had no idea who I was even talking to the first several times until the pastor of our church told me and I said, oh, cool, good to know. And, uh, and he's just, I think that just speaks um, to his character, who he is as a person. I 
think this song, The Greatest Tear, was just kind of born out of one of those genius ideas, because I don't understand how he does it. He tells the story, he said he was driving down 820 one day, going through Fort Worth, and God just hits him with this thought of, you know, my, my story needs to be told. And I think the twist that he sort of felt in his own heart was, it needs to be told from God's perspective. So he says, just Eureka, I have to pull over. So he said, I pulled over on the side of the road. I'm writing all this stuff down. He said he just didn't want to forget it. It's such a unique thing that this man who has all these gifts and abilities in the business world has been able to, to come to this place in his life where he is part of songwriting. And on that day in heaven, as the angels stopped their song. Mark Colley started working with Bob and Janice a little bit. And I, and I know Bob came to Mark one day and said, um, I got this crazy idea for this song. So Bob brought the idea initially. Mark started working on it. And, and they played it for me. All I had to hear was a verse and a chorus of it. And I was taken by it. But I think what everybody connects to the first time they hear it is, oh yeah. You know, we think of Jesus on that day and all the torment he went through, and that is so important. But to think of the father's perspective of watching your child go through that, I mean, I think that whole thing shifted for me when I had kids of my own. I don't know how that's not gonna be life-changing for people. I think it's just the message of this song that I'm gonna keep coming back to every time. And um, I just don't know how that can get old for anybody. They had no way of knowing While their hearts were breaking still The promise Jesus made Was about to be fulfilled I want to create music that gives people hope. And regardless of where you're at in life, regardless of your beliefs, um, I want you to have hope. And yes, ah, it's my desire that you come to a relationship with Christ. But I think we have to accept that that's not the place where everybody is right now. And so if this music, if all it does is water a seed that's already been planted or give someone the encouragement to just take the next step they need, God loves us the same. And we just want to show you that we, we have the same struggles you do. Maybe the difference in us and a lot of people comes down to that word hope. At the end of the day, we have hope. Ooh.